As the cases of coronavirus reaches 407 in Nigeria, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control warns Nigerians to prepare for the transmission of the virus to more states. And the National Human Rights Commission has reported that law enforcement agents have killed 18 persons while enforcing the lockdown. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. As COVID-19 cases reaches 407 in Nigeria, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has warned that the virus is going to spread to further states in Nigeria. The 22 states that have been identified with confirmed cases are Lagos, Abuja, Oshun, Kano, Edo, Oyo, Ogun, Katsina, Bauchi, Kaduna, and others. The NCDC stated that the goal is to build a more efficient and public health infrastructure. Now, joining us to have a conversation on this is a medical practitioner and the person of Ronald Ikbe. Ronald, Dr. Ronald, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And how are you doing this evening, Dr. Ronald? Doing great. And you? hope you stay safe too. Yeah, sure. All right, let's get to the, to the matter on the table this evening. The, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control announced on its Twitter handle yesterday that 34 new cases of coronavirus have been reported in Nigeria. Now, that brings the total number of confirmed infections in the country to 407. This is worrisome, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, sure. Now, what, what, are we, what are we doing right here or what are we not doing right? Well, uh, I'm not a bit too much surprised because uh, the, the new cases we are getting is because uh, the NCDC, they've been able to scale up capacity, so they are doing more testing. So definitely we're going to get more cases. So that's what is really happening. Now, there's a situation all that has brought about a lockdown in um, three major states, namely Lagos, Ogun, and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Now, within this lockdown, we, we're having disreported cases. And similarly, we're beginning to see more people in our streets in somewhat violation of the lockdown order because they need to go out to fend for themselves, they did say. Now, what, what possible danger yeah. do you think this portends to, to the lockdown and the infection itself, knowing we, we have a scare right now of, of community spread? Yeah, that, that's the fear everyone has right now, because the more people uh, get to move around, uh, chances are like uh, they are going to increase the spread amongst people. And that was the reason for the lockdown, ab initio. But uh, we can see now people are complaining they are hungry, there is no money, and they are uh, flouting the lockdown order. So it actually increases the risk of community transmission. So that's the problem we're going to face. Now, is there any way, is there anything possible we can do right now to forestall the, the possibility of, of community spread of COVID-19? Well, I'm afraid the government is able to offer palliative uh, measures like they're doing, probably uh, ramp up uh, the distribution of food items and relief items in general, people. So I feel maybe people could be more... Uh, 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 receptive to the idea of staying back at home and uh, let us sort these things out. Because now most people on the streets, their own excuses, okay, I don't have food to eat, I don't have uh, what to eat, my family can't feed, what do I do? So that is why most... Yeah. All right. um, now you're a medical doctor. Oh, okay. times, I think it's going to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you think it's going to work? Please, finish your thoughts on that. Yeah, I feel it's going to work. So a lot more folks may be receptive to staying at home, knowing that, okay, the government uh, has got my back covered. They're going to bring me food and all that. So it makes more sense that way for most of them. That's what I think. All right. Now, uh, the, the, the WHO president in the person of Gabriel Jesus, they say sometimes last week that, um, that this virus is, is probably... Um, one of the scariest so far because it seems to mutate and its, its characteristics is still not properly understood in the science world. Now, you are a medical practitioner. Uh, would you want to explain a little bit to people out there who are watching this evening, I mean, in your capacity, how you understand this virus and its mutation processes? Well, like you just said, uh, and the WHO also said, it's a new virus. That's why it's called the novel virus. And uh, a lot of research by scientists all over is being uh, 
uh, is going on right now. Everybody is trying to understand the virus because nobody fully understands uh, what it is actually very different from other coronaviruses. It belongs to the same corona family, but is a different strain for the other from the other ones we uh, are conversant with. So there's really not much information right now. So that's why studies are being done every day, trying to understand the pattern. So, and because of this, that's why uh, they've advocated uh, things like social distancing, wash your hands. At least these are the little things we know that, okay, could halt the transmission of this virus to slow down the spread in the community. Now, you're a medical practitioner and healthcare workers are at the forefront of providing help and care to people who... Um, may have contracted this virus. And we have cases of health workers who are, who are actually at risk of this virus and a few reported cases of those who have already been confirmed with contracting the COVID-19. Now, yes. have, have you had any experience so far with any patient who contracted th this virus? Well, currently, no, I have not. <laughs> and, and do you know of anybody, I mean, close by any, any medical health care giver who might have? No, I really don't know, except the ones uh, I hear on TV, on the news. No direct uh, colleague that I'm aware of that has come in close contact with someone with COVID or suspected case. All right, Dr. Ronald, do stay with us. We'll go for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take more deliberations on PLUS Politics. All right. Thank you for staying with us. This is Plus Politics on Skype. Still is Dr. Ronald. Dr. Ronald, thank you for staying with us. You're welcome. And joining us live in the studio is political analyst Ugo Chuku Ikako. Good to see you, Ugo Chuku, and how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm good. Stay thanks. safe. Stay safe. Social distancing. Very well. Great. Now, Dr. Ronald, do you think if we had more testing capacity, unlike it is now, that we will be recording more reported number of cases than is, is recorded currently? Definitely. I believe, I believe so. So how can yeah, we, what so. do we begin to do now in your, in your own um, professional opinion? What, what should the NCDC, the, um, the federal government do now to increase our testing capacity for COVID-19? Because just a shutdown alone is not enough to say, you know, we want to curtail and forestall the spread of this virus. Well, looking at, the, rather, listening to the chairman, uh, sorry, uh, DG yesterday, so apparently they're actually doing their best to increase scale across states and all that. So I believe they are doing their best to increase uh, testing capacity. Then at, at the same time, I think the government should also find, I know in Lagos here, a lot of isolation centers beginning to come up and all that. So in the long run, I feel we may actually need more. And uh, states that have not started, I I think they should begin to prepare because we're going to pick up more cases. Interesting that you did say states that have not started. Now, um, some Northern governors um, over, the, over the week, during the beginning of this week, did cry out and say, as at Monday, um, there were no isolation centers in, in, in the state. Now, we have 34 new cases of COVID-19 that have been reported as um, 18 in Lagos, two, 12 in Kano. Um, we have about two in Katsina, yeah. one in Delta, and also one in Niger, which is the total number of 22 states now with confirmed cases. Yeah. Is there a reason why we still don't have, you know, equipped, well-working isolation centers in all the states across the Federation? Well, I, I wouldn't know, but I want to believe probably due to funding uh, issues here and there. I really don't know because generally, even before the advent of COVID, you know, the, the Nigerian healthcare system has not been adequately funded. Year in, year out, they get uh, maybe 4 to 5 percent, never exceeding 5 percent of the budget, which is grossly inadequate to do anything. But I believe with this, maybe funds can be released for these various states to be able to build and uh, strengthen their capacity to handle COVID. Now, Gochukwu, I come to you. Um, 22 states already, we confirmed cases of COVID-19. Uh, do, do you think we're, we're heading towards a national emergency where there'll be a total lockdown of all the states as we have the decision order in three states right now, the federal capital inclusive, Ogun and Lagos State? 22 states with confirmed cases. Uh, it, the, sadly, the number is increasing, yes. and uh, we're beginning to see more cases, especially in the north. And uh, I think the, the, the reason why this is happening is because uh, I don't think a lot of states didn't take this serious the same way Lagos State handled it. 
All right. Uh, Lagos State has been in the forefront since uh, the first case that, I was, that started in Ogun State and up to this point. You could see uh, the collaboration between both the private sector and the public sector trying to drive, uh, drive, do the much they can in this particular space. And essentially, some other governors within the Southwest, uh, uh, the governor of uh, your state working with Life Bank and uh, Ibuka Wosika and some other good individuals that yeah. have brought out money to help. So I feel that in the North, that didn't happen. But we saw a situation when the former governor, uh, governor of Castina uh, placed down a lockdown and there was crash, there was a there, there was a, a bit of clash over there. And after they lifted that, and people had to go to monks and restaurants. So you see, uh, yeah, we should we should also forget that there was a few northern states who actually locked their borders and 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 cancelled on inter interstate travel between um, neighboring states and refused some states entrance into their states. Some northern states did do that. I see, uh, yeah. uh, uh, that, that, that that's a plus on them. Uh, but already we're, we're seeing what is happening now. Yes. So uh, we, we, are we going to have more cases going forward? Yes, sadly, yes. So uh, at this point, we need to. Uh, it's, it's easy for the governors to come and cry and say there's no money and rest of them. You are a governor. The reason that you are there is to provide solutions to issues like this. Uh, is, is in time of emergency that you, you need to show the world that this is what you're capable of. And especially the governors in the north. I say it again. Uh, is in, in Nigeria, so let's use Samolu for example. Look at what he's doing. See how he's collaborating. It's easy to put heads together. The NCDC is there to act as a synergy to help every other person. So they need to step on it and start working at the moment. We're going to have more cases, especially what happened in Kano. Uh, the, 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 person, uh, the person had to move from, came, came back, lied about his details, and moved around and, and went to different states across the north. That is a lot to cause, to, to cause trouble. That's a lot to increase the numbers, uh, as we've seen already. So it's going to keep getting worse, but the governors need to help him step in at this point to flatten the curve. If not, uh, it's, going to, it's going to turn ugly. Dr. Ronald, as at 11.20 p.m. on the 15th of April, there are 407, four, um, 407 confirmed cases of COVID-19 reported in Nigeria. All right, we have 128 that have been discharged. Um, now, as a medical practitioner, I, I wanted to help us understand, you know, the, the, the hopes of these figures. And in Lagos State, do you think there might be still an increasing number of confirmed cases in, in Lagos? What, what is the likely outcome? Dr. Well, like before, because testing has increased, we're definitely going to pick more cases. That's for sure. So I expect these numbers to rise as the days go by. Then it's a good thing also that uh, we are having a lot of uh, discharge cases, people who come in, get treated, get well, they get test, uh, test negative for the virus, and they are discharged. So, so far, so good. It's been good. So the outlook is, is looking good anyway in Lagos for now. All right. Now, um, Ogochuku, Lagos State now started off, um, before the cessation order came into effect by the president, started a budget, started putting up some, some palliatives and measures in place to forestall and curtail this virus. Many have argued the fact that um, there, were, there were not so much of deliberations and consultations that were made with him before the cessation order that came from the president. Now, how, how do you react to this, that he was on top of the matter and that Lagos State shouldn't have been one of the states, um, Lagos State shouldn't have experienced a complete lockdown. And many argue the fact that we're borrowing a system from other economies that, have, that are more functional or more operational than we are, and that there should have been homegrown solutions to just an outright cessation order of, of a lockdown. Well, I think I disagree with the people that are saying that it's, it's easy for someone to, you're not, in, you're not in the governor's office, you don't understand the level of pressure they're dealing with. And it's easy to pontificate and say that we should not import homegrown solutions. Uh, only few countries in the world, only very few countries in the world are, did, not have, did not put in place full lockdown policies. All right? And especially for us in Africa, where we have a lot of urban poor, where we have a lot of movement. And people, are, we have, we, people who live in a highly density population, where, 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 where places people are, people are, people are, are, people are together. So lockdown to, an, to a great extent has helped Lagos State. Most importantly, we shouldn't forget that. All right. Yeah, there are other issues, there are other arguments that can be made within this, uh, within, within, within what's happening within this period. But we need to understand that the, the proper lockdown in Lagos has helped to slow down this. All right. Lagos is the main point of entry into this country. All right, so if, if we look at that, you see it's a win-win situation for us. The, the conversation should be, okay, is there anything that we've, we've done these two weeks already? Is there anything that we need to improve? Is there anything that we need to take away to better what we're doing? All right? De definitely, yes. Definitely, and I, yes. Agree, I agree with that. Yes. And, but so far, has the lockdown helped? It has. If not, uh, maybe, 
All right. Part of those people that, that, that have new cases now that, 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 that are in the hospitals in Yaba and the rest of them, they could have moved around within this period and they would have infected more people. So it's easy for people to make this argument. I, I don't say this about the governor. I don't say this about anybody. But the most important thing is about our safety and about our life. And this, the problem that we're facing is bigger than all of us. The whole world is thinking at the moment, putting out solutions and the rest of them. But this thing is still trying to beat us. But with our collective effort and understanding and do the part that we need to do, I believe that we'll get through this. All right, Dr. Rona, this will be my last question for you before we let you go off this night. Now, with the, inc with the increase in numbers, as reported, and 22 states now with confirmed cases, should we have any concerns on, on community spread? Well, yes. Um, yes, I think so. Because um, so far, the, the lockdown hasn't been very, very much effective, per se. Like, where I stay, a lot of people are still milling around, the bikes are moving, and all that. So, but I think uh, with the palliative measures being uh, undertaken by the government, uh, maybe they need to improve more and uh, be able to kind of uh, assuage the citizens. So, I feel that could help to slow down the spread while we try to flatten the curve. Dr. Ronald Ikbeth, thank you for joining us and for your medical contribution to the show this evening. Thank you very much. Ogochuk is still with us in the studio, and when we return, we'll be talking more on PLOS Politics, and I want to say thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, who really do we need protection from in these perilous times? This is Op Max for discussion. Stay with us.